Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to INF 300 and thank you for joining us today for this Cloud Next session exploring GCE VM payloads. Today, we're going to start by giving you an overview of the GCE VM families, and then we're going to have a deep dive looking at each of these VM families to see how they're tailored to meet the needs of individual workloads, looking at our general purpose VM families, compute intensive VM families, memory optimized VMs, and then finally, options for running accelerated workloads on Google Compute Engine. I'd like to start by introducing myself. I'm Jamie Kinney. I'm a product manager, and I'm responsible for the Tau T2D VM family. I joined Google a little bit over three years ago, initially as a cloud solutions architect, uh, focusing on both scientific and technical computing, and also working with some of Google Cloud's largest customers as they migrated their cloud-native workloads to GCE. Subra, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Jamie. Hey, my name is Subra Chandramauli. I'm also a product manager at Google Cloud, uh, covering Google Compute Engine products. My background has been primarily in the semiconductor industry, uh, focused on processors and FPGA accelerators for data center markets, including uh, amongst others. Thanks, Subra. Okay, just to kick things off, I'd like to start with an overview of what GCE is. So GCE, or Google Compute Engine, is Google Cloud's managed service for offering virtual machines as a service. With GCE, you can easily choose a VM that meets your needs, uh, either selecting one of our predefined shapes or custom defining your own. Uh, following our recommendations, if you like, or if you have uh, exact specifications, you can dial in that VM to precisely meet your needs. GCE also takes care of a lot of the operational overhead of, of running applications, uh, offering technologies like live migration, for example, which will allow us to easily move your virtual machine to a server while we perform maintenance on a machine that uh, might need some assistance. We can also give you a number of mechanisms to reduce the cost of running your workloads when you run on top of Google Compute Engine with features like sustained use discounts that automatically uh, provide discounts for long running applications. Or if you'd like to get even deeper cost savings, you can look at our one year and three year committed use discounts. Today, our focus is going to be on GCE VM families and how to choose the right family for the needs of a given workload. Uh, just to provide a little bit of history on Google Compute Engine, we initially launched the service back in, in uh, June of 2012. And at that time, Google Compute Engine offered just a single type of virtual machine. Over the past nine years, on top of that single VM family, we also built a number of features, things like live migration, uh, the ability to attach persistent disk, and, and other features that make those virtual machines even more capable and powerful and, and better fit for your applications and their needs. In recent years, we've expanded the number of virtual machine families that are offered by Google Compute Engine to include compute optimized, memory optimized, accelerated workload uh, optimized VMs, and even more general purpose VM families. Today, we're going to look into, into each of these VM families and see how they're best applied. Uh, starting with a, a map to help you orient yourself around the different VM families that we offer, uh, we generally divide these into two high-level categories, general purpose VMs and workload optimized VM families. On the general purpose side, we have the cost optimized VM families. This includes E2. And these are, are VM families that are designed to minimize the price per vCPU. We also offer a balanced VM family that gives you access to all of GCE's features, the flexibility to attach local SSDs, to attach um, any of our persistent disk variants, uh, access to the, the fastest networking, uh, and the ability to dial in the, the custom VM shapes. For customers that are running scale-out workloads for a wide range of applications, be it uh, web serving, application serving, or, or even high throughput computing workloads, uh, we've introduced a, a new category of VM families designed to meet those needs, uh, currently including the Tau T2D VM family that you'll be hearing more from Subran. On the other side of this map, you see the workload optimized VM families. These are VM families that are specifically tailored to meet the needs of a, of a possibly niche or, or a very well-defined set of applications. Uh, this could include the compute optimized VM family that's really well suited for high performance computing, game servers, and, and other compute intensive applications. Memory optimized VMs for uh, vertically scaled applications that need access to large amounts of, of memory and balanced compute to go with it. 
and accelerator optimized VMs with TPUs and GPUs to meet the needs of machine learning and, and other workloads that benefit from these specific accelerators. In addition to VM families, Google Compute Engine, uh, as I mentioned over the past several years, has developed a number of features that uh, provide even more value to your virtual machine engines. This includes things like uh, custom machine types, the ability to launch sole tenant VMs, which we'll talk about more later in the presentation, uh, the ability to attach various forms of storage, be it local SSD or persistent disk storage of, of various speeds and capabilities, and also enhanced 100 gigabit networking that delivers fantastically low latency uh, and the bandwidth needed for some of your most demanding workloads. Now I'd like to hand it off to Subra to give us a deeper dive on what we mean by general purpose VM families and talk about the workloads and the families that tend to go with those. Subra? Hey, thanks, Jamie. As Jamie was alluding to, one of our core philosophies at Google Cloud is to enable our customers the flexibility to choose the right virtual machine to run their various different workloads. General purpose workloads make up a whole wide variety from simple web serving to more complex media transcode or processing types of workloads to data analytics, to name a few. We can also think of dev and test as a separate workload that whose requirements are pretty unique. In addition, various enterprise applications may be categorized under the general purpose category as well. Our general purpose N2 and N2D machine types are a good fit for such workloads. Our general purpose N2 and N2D VMs are designed to support a variety of workloads by offering a perfect balance of compute and memory resources, up to 224 vCPUs with 864 gigabytes of memory. N2 and N2D machine types provide high degree of flexibility for our customers. Custom machine types enable you to right size your resources, enabling great cost saving feature. More on this later. They also enable you to auto upgrade to new CPU generations when we launch a new CPU platform. This means you can simply choose a minimum CPU platform, and Google will automatically run your VM on the latest generation CPU. And also attach up to nine terabytes of local SSD per node, and you get high networking performance up to 100 gigabits per second. These VMs are also available globally across GCE regions now. The key difference between N2 and N2D are summarized on the table on the right side of the slide. N2 VMs are a general purpose Intel processor based VMs supporting second generation Intel Xeon scalable processor or Cascade Lake and offering VMs that go up to 80 vCPUs. The N2, N2 VMs offer up to 20 to 30% price performance improvements compared to N1. N2D is our AMD Epic based general purpose VMs leveraging second generation AMD Epic Rome processors. They come with up to 224 vCPUs per node and offer you a lower price point with approximately 13% lower pricing compared to our N2 machine types. N2 VMs are ideal for workloads that require high per core performance. You can see some benchmarks that compare N2 VMs to our N1 VMs on the right side of the slide. N2 machines are priced at parity to N1 family, enabling much higher price performance when compared to our N1 machines. N2D machines, are ideal for high throughput workloads that can benefit from having a large number of threads. N2D machines are ideal for workloads that may benefit from confidential computing features in addition. Okay. Switching gears a bit, our E2 VM family are ideal for applications where cost is a priority. E2 VMs offer machine types up to 32 vCPUs and 128 gigabytes of memory. We also offer the flexibility of choosing custom machine types with our E2 family. E2 family runs on Intel Haswell through Cascade Lake and AMD ROM processors. E2 machines are ideal for dev and test types of workloads or for workloads that may be batch processed, for example. This family provides uh, up to 31% cost saving when compared to our N1 family per VM. Switching gears again, earlier this year in June, we announced our latest G, uh, VM family under the brand of Tau. The T2D is our first family of, v, uh, first family of VMs that will be offered under the Tau brand. Currently under preview, 
cloud VMs are designed to meet the needs of customers running scale out workloads on Google Cloud. We chose the Tau brand as a Greek letter Tau is used to represent both TARC and the golden ratio. The TARC is a metaphor uh, that is apt because T2D VM family allocates an entire physical core per vCPU, delivering excellent per thread performance, while the golden ratio Tau uh, rep represents T2D's focus on only core features needed for scale out workloads in order to deliver excellent price performance. Focusing on T2D's performance, we can see that it outperforms VM types available elsewhere. Here's a quick look at two benchmarks where we showcase T2D's price performance for estimated specint and core mark. For estimated specint, T2D provides 42% better price performance when compared to other major cloud providers. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Subra. Now we'd like to take a look at compute intensive workloads. And I thought we would start by giving you an overview of what we mean by compute intensive workloads. Uh, you know, while I've focused on scientific and technical computing in the past, uh, compute intensive workloads actually fall under a number of verticals and in industries around the world. Uh, this includes workloads such as high performance web servers that need access to uh, fast clock speed CPUs, as well as the networking that allows pages to be served with incredibly low latency. Uh, also really important for AAA game servers that need to both you know, scale up vertically, but also ensure that there, there's no jitter that's, uh, that's being viewed as a result of any inconsistencies in performance with the CPU or, or network variability. High performance computing near and dear to my heart tends to fall into two categories, tightly coupled, uh, which will usually rely on low latency networking between a number of machines, um, and also high throughput computing that re relies on many machines working in concert to solve a problem uh, where the uh, per core performance of those machines is, is going to indicate how well that application runs. Uh, and a great example of, of a high throughput computing workload is electronic design automation or EDA, which needs access to both fast cores, but also a network that makes it easy for all of those cores to access uh, resources that are stored on a high performance shared file system. In order to meet the needs of these unique applications, we've developed compute optimized VMs, including the C2 family, that offer a combination of excellent per core performance, uh, consistent performance, and also isolation between virtual machines. The C2 VMs, uh, as we can see here with uh, the uh, benchmark results that compare C2 to the N1 family, offer better uh, per core performance, offer uh, low latency, high bandwidth networking, and uh, are, are really designed to meet the needs of these unique applications. Another element of the, of the C2 family is that the standard machine types for C2 have a, a lower uh, memory per core ratio as these types of applications tend to focus on uh, CPU needs as opposed to taking advantage of, of large amounts of memory per core. Speaking of memory per core, I'd like to now transition over to the memory intensive workload. So this could include a number of, of different types of applications. Could be an in-memory database like SAP HANA. It could be in-memory analytics, uh, OLAP systems and other analytic systems that need to keep data sets in memory for low latency analysis and access, uh, as well as in-memory caching that's common components of, of many uh, distributed and, and cloud native applications. Think of Redis or Elasticache, for example. For these workloads, the M1 and M2 VM families are likely to be your best fit. Uh, M1 and M2 VMs can uh, offer up to 12 terabytes of memory while also offering a large number of, of cores to go hand in hand with that memory so that you're able to analyze it at scale. The largest M2 uh, UltraMem and, and MegaMem VMs, for example, offer over 400 cores or, or 400 vCPUs per virtual machine. Uh, these VM families also uh, take advantage of the, the fully flexible infrastructure, allowing you to adjust the, the CPU and memory needs um, uh, uh, provisioned to meet the needs of your applications. Uh, and we also support the, the provisioning models, including uh, flex cuts that allow your, you to uh, get discounts um, when you're using all of our memory optimized VM shapes, both current and future. Uh, now I'd like to transition us back to uh, another class of workloads. These are the uh, accelerated workloads that need access to GPUs and, and TPUs. Super, would you like to give us a, an overview of these workloads and the VM families to go with them? Sure, thanks, Jamie. 
There are several workloads that can take advantage of hardware GPU acceleration. Typically, these are data intensive workloads. For instance, you may have an AI inference or a training type of a workload. Some of the training workloads could be bursty, but they have to deal with a lot of data uh, in, in a bursty mode. Or you can think of a data analytics where you have massive data coming through and you, you, you have the ability to process the data parallelly. GPUs is a, are a great fit for parallel processing. Other types of workloads that can take advantage of uh, GPU acceleration are high performance computing and several video intensive workloads. Our A2 VM family includes the latest NVIDIA A100 GPUs with up to 40 gigabytes of memory. In these machine types, we support up to 96 vCPUs with 1.3 terabytes of memory. These machines come in various predefined machine types with, uh, with support up to 16 NVIDIA A100 GPUs, delivering up to 10 petaflops of F FP16 performance or 20 petaflops of int 8 performance in a single VM. Thanks, Supra. Really appreciate that. Um, in addition to each of the VM families that we've, we've mentioned, uh, we also have a number of GCE features that span multiple VM families and that are uh, really going to be relevant to a, a broad range of, of workloads. Uh, we just want to touch on a few of these today, and I'd like to start by talking about custom machine types. This is a feature that's unique to Google Cloud, and it's a feature that is giving our customers significant cost savings. On average, they're seeing 19% savings, and in many cases, they're seeing uh, substantially more than that. Custom machine types, as you can see in the little slider or, or diagram in the middle of this, allows you to precisely dial in the CPU and memory that's allocated to, you, to the VMs that you're launching within Google Compute Engine. Uh, this is often applied in cases where the standard machine types that we've predefined uh, for ease of use and flexibility uh, might not meet your needs and where you need to allocate perhaps a little bit more memory or a little bit more CPU for your workload. Uh, and by allowing you to tell us exactly what you need, we, we don't over-provision those resources for you. This allows us to then uh, reduce the cost of a Google Compute Engine and we pass those savings back on to you. Some additional GC features that also benefit the, the wide range of workloads you might want to run in Google Compute Engine include sole tenant nodes. Uh, this is most often applied for applications that have licensing requirements that mandate that you are the only customer or only user running on a, on a given physical server. With sole tenant nodes, you have access to the entire machine and you have the ability to carve that up into whatever VM shapes you need. Uh, very helpful for uh, for uh, applications that, that have those specific licensing requirements. Uh, shielded VMs are a feature that allow you to uh, ensure that your, your workloads are running on, on trusted and, and verified hardware, taking advantage of the, uh, the, the TPM uh, and EFI firmware that, we, uh, that we're running on, on GC infrastructure. And uh, confidential VMs provide additional isolation and sandboxing for especially sensitive applications. You can read more about these uh, in some of the resources that we've provided below, uh, accessing both the GCE documentation, uh, tutorials, case studies, and, and other resources. We've also provided some links to additional next sessions that you might want to attend, as well as a couple of Coursera courses for those of you who might be new to Google Compute Engine or, or simply want to expand your familiarity and understanding of our services. With that, I'd really like to thank Subra for joining me today. And most importantly, I'd like to thank you for joining us and for listening to this talk. Uh, I hope that it improved your understanding of Google Compute Engine, and I hope that the rest of your next experience is a wonderful one. Have a great day. Thanks.